In this video, we will learn how to create a web API using ASP.NET Core and C Sharp. By the end of the video, you will be able to create an API that supports creating, reading, updating, and deleting data. My name is Pat. If you are new to the channel, consider subscribing. Let's get into it. The API we are going to create will be able to manage books. We will expose various endpoints for creating, reading, updating, and deleting books. These endpoints will be used in combination with an HTTP verb to perform specific action on the data. In case you want to follow along, I will use Visual Studio 2019 and the .NET 5 SDK. Let's launch Visual Studio and then select Create a new project. On the next screen, select the ASP.NET Core web application and then Next. In this dialog, we will give a name to the project. Let's name it Book API and then click Create. In this dialog, select ASP.NET Core web API, then click on Create to generate all the project files. Well done, the project is created. Let's remove two files we won't need weather forecast at the root of the project and weather forecast controller in the controllers folder. Behind the REST API, we will use Entity Framework to interact with a SQLite database. Entity Framework is an object relational mapper. It allows working with a database using .NET object instead of SQL statements. Let's start by installing a NuGet package named microsoft.entityframeworkcore.sqlite. This package has everything that helps work with Entity Framework and SQLite. Using Entity Framework Core, data access is performed using a model. We need to create a book model. Let's create a folder named Models then add a new class named book. This class has few properties. ID, which is a unique identifier. The title represents the title of the book. Author is the name of, uh, well, the author. Description is a short description of the book. In the real world, a book has probably more attributes than this. Entity Framework Core also need a context object. The context object allows querying and saving data. In the model folder, let's add a new class called book context. This class inherits from the DB context class. The constructor takes a DB context option object as parameter. This object is a configuration of the context. It will be injected through dependency injection. Let's also expose a DB set property that represents a collection of books. Let's make sure the database is created when using the DB context. Once the book context is created, we need to register it for dependency injection. Let's update the configure services method in the startup.cs file. We use the add db context to register the book context class with ASP.NET Core's dependency injection system. We also provide a connection string to the SQLite database, which is a simple file in our project. If you have an existing database, this is the place where you can set your connection string. Entity framework is all set. It's time to add a repository. Simply put, a repository is a layer that sits between our application and the data access layer, which is, in our case, the book context. Adding a repository is a good practice. It helps adding a layer of abstraction between your code and the data access layer. Let's create a folder named repositories. Then we add an interface called iBook Repository. This interface describes operations that can be performed against the database. 
get will retrieve all books. Get with ID parameter will retrieve a single book. Create, update, and delete are self explanatory. Let's add a concrete implementation. In the repositories folder, we add a new class called book repository. This class implements the iBook repository interface. The repository will query the database using the book context. We inject the context through the constructor. Let's implement the create method. We use the add method of the DB set to add a new instance of the book class. The save changes async method will insert data into the database. In the delete method, we use the remove method of the DB set, and the save changes async will delete the entity from the database. Let's implement the get method now. Invoking the to list async on the DB set will fetch all the books from the database. The holder get method takes an ID parameter. We will use the find by ID async method to get a single book. The last method is the update method. We change the state of the entity and the save changes async will update the entity in the database. The repository is ready. Now we need to register it with the dependency injection system. Let's update the configure service method in the startup.cs file. AddScoped will register an instance of the book repository. This also means that only one instance of the book repository class will be created for a given HTTP request. The repository is ready. Let's create an API controller. An API controller is a class that is responsible for handling requests for an endpoint. Right click on the controllers folder. Next, add the controller. Then select API controller empty. We name the class books controller. Let's take a look at the structure of the controller. It has a route attribute that defines the path that the controller will handle. In our case, the path will be API slash books. The API controller attribute provide behavior such as automatic model validation and more. The controller inherits from controller base which provides many property and method that are useful for handling HTTP requests. The controller needs an instance of the book repository to interact with the database. Let's inject the book repository in the constructor. Now, let's implement methods that are going to handle specific HTTP requests. These methods are called action method. We will create one for each HTTP verb we want to handle. Let's create a new method called getBooks. This method returns an I enumerable of book. We decorate the method with the HTTP get attribute. This tells ASP.NET that the method will handle HTTP get requests. We get the books from the repository using the get method. When this action is invoked, ASP.NET will convert the books object to JSON before returning it to the caller. Let's create a new method also named getBooks. This method returns a task of action result of a book object. Why can we just return a book object? The task part is because the caller will be able to await this method. The action result provide the flexibility to return other types like not found or bad request, for instance. The method takes an ID as a parameter. It also decorated with the HTTP get to tell that it will handle HTTP get request.
Notice that the HTTP GET in the attribute is used with an argument in curly braces. This puts the endpoint subpath in the ID parameter. If we use API slash books slash the number three, for instance, then the ID parameter will have three as a value. We get a single book from the repository using the get method that takes an ID. Let's run the project to test what we've done so far. As you can see, the default page comes with a documentation of the API. The template we use to create the project comes with open API support. This gives us Swagger UI, which is a tool that generates documentation for our API. It also supports testing the API in the browser. Let's try the get endpoint. If I execute it, of course, there is no data because our database is empty. Let's add a breakpoint inside the actions get books. If I execute the get endpoint again, as you can see, the breakpoint in the first get books method is hit. Let's do the same with the second get. I provide a random ID. And if I execute, the breakpoint is also hit. The endpoint seems to work. Let's implement an action method to posting a book. In the controller, we add a new method called post books. The method takes a book object in parameter and returns a task of action result of book. We decorate the method with the HTTP post attribute to tell that it will handle HTTP post requests. Thanks to a process called model binding, ASP.NET will convert a JSON in the request payload to a book object. We use the create method on the repository to insert a book in the database. We return a create at action result, which will generate 201 HTTP status code. Let's run the project to test this endpoint. Select post. In the request body, we add a JSON text. This JSON represents a book. We set some properties. We execute. If we check the result, we get a 201 HTTP status code. Let's add another book. And execute. Now, let's test the get endpoint. If I execute, I got the two books I post. Now let's add an action method to update an existing book. We add a new method called put books. It returns a task of action result. It takes an ID parameter, which is the ID of the book we want to update. It also takes a book parameter, which is the updated books. It is decorated with the HTTP put to tell that it will handle HTTP put request. We make sure that the ID provided in the URL and the one in the payload is the same. Otherwise, we return a bad request result. Bad requests generate 400 HTTP status code which indicates that the server cannot understand the request. If the ID is OK, we invoke the update method of the repository. We return a no content result that will generate 201 HTTP status code to indicate that the request has been processed, but there is no data. Let's test this endpoint. Let's first execute a get so we can copy a book payload. Now in the put endpoint, I set the ID to two, paste the payload, I modify the description. If I execute a request, 
if I execute the get endpoint again, you can see that the description has been changed. Let's implement the action method for deleting a book. We add a new method called delete books. The method takes an ID parameter, which is the ID of the book we want to delete. It returns a task of action result. We decorate it with an HTTP delete attribute to tell that it will handle HTTP delete requests. We first check if the book exists in the database. If the book exists, we invoke the remove method from the repository to delete it. Finally, we return a no content result. Let's test the endpoint. I provide the ID2, which is the ID of the second book, and I hit execute. If I execute the get endpoint, as you can see, the second book is no longer there. That's it for this tutorial. If you enjoy it, feel free to like the video and subscribe to the channel. Thanks for watching. See you soon.